It's Ivy Slater, and you're listening to Her Success Story Podcast, a show where gutsy businesswomen share their success journey. Thanks, Tara. Thank you for showing up today and interviewing me. I think it's going to be fun. And yes, it's going to be a little different. I'm sure we're both going to learn a few things. Absolutely. So let's take it back to the beginning and tell me how you even initially got into dance and how and why you decided to stick with it. Because a lot of people start as just a hobby, but this was a long, you know, a long time for you. So um, how I got into it is, is, is a little bit of a crazy story. I was a young girl. I was about uh, turning three years old. I was still in my terrible twos. And my mom took me, my sister was in the dance class and my mom took me because that's what moms did. You know, the younger sibling always gets carried along. And I was sitting in the back trying to keep a fidgety two plus under three year old busy, which is a challenge and go back to, you know, my, I've always been rather open about my age. I'm 57. So it was the time that the hair barrettes were metal with two metal prongs. Right. And if you think of the modern age with our, with our kids' toys and how you have, oh, you put the round thing in the round hole and the square thing in the square hole, I saw the two metal prongs and the two holes sitting on the wall that happened to be an electrical outlet. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I put the two long things in the two holes that I thought it went with. It wasn't good. We uh, ran to the hospital. Um, and then my mother likes like, oh my goodness, now how do I get my older daughter to dance class? Because I have to keep Ivy busy because she can't play with the electrical outlets anymore. Right. So the teacher is like, just let her move around in the back. It's fine. She'll think she's in class and this and that. And that's, that's when I started dancing so young, just in the back of my sister's dance class. Wow. Well, that's, yeah, that's awesome. So it's a little crazy. It's, it's a little crazy, crazy. crazy. <laughs> but it worked out. So when did it become something you realized that you actually enjoyed and wanted to do? Um, you know, you're right. A lot of people um, in growing up, we try so many different things. And I'm not going to say I was any different. Um, I did try a lot of things and a lot of things I was like, I tried, I went out for the basket, I went out for basketball. I was like, this is stupid running up and down a court, trying to dribble a ball, broke a finger. I said, I'm out. <laughs> um, I, you know, I used to, I love to roller skate and ride bikes. You know, I loved football. I was a huge, I'm still a huge football fan. I went to all the jet games with my dad. Um, I, but nothing ever, I can't draw, I can't sing. I mean, I kept trying things and I kept ignoring it because I would stand in the kitchen. My mother would tell me to set the table and I would do brush, brush stuff while setting the table. You know, she was like, okay, it's clear the table. Okay. So let's do tondus, you know, or, or it, it's just what my body always did. You know, every time I was learning something new, it wasn't like, go practice. You need to practice this. It was just like, okay, so from watching television, I'll do it. If I'm, it, can I stand up and do my homework at, and still move? Right. So it, it wasn't anything I consciously said, oh my God, I love, and I want to continue this. It was just something like my body took to, right. And it was anything I was doing. If I was brushing my teeth, if I was taking a shower, if I was sitting at the table, I was doing something dance-like. Right. Some exercise, some, something we did at the ballet bar, some beginner practice thing, whatever it was, whenever it was. Just a natural ability and love that you had from a young age for that. So when did it become serious where you were doing this, you know, I assume more than once a week, you know, dancers have a lot of classes. When did it become, oh, this is something I think I want to do long term? Um, honestly, I could count it when I was 14. Um, things changed for me. I, you know, I had gone to summer camp with the other kids and, you know, I went from camp to camp because I never found my tribe. I never found my people. I, I was the girl that was picked on. I was the girl that didn't fit in. And it was like, okay, what are we doing with this kid? Like, what's up next summer? And I said, I want to go to dance camp. 
And my parents were like, okay. And then they saw the prices compared to the, like the local little camp. Yeah. And they're like, whoa. And they said, well, you can't do that all summer. It's, it's too expensive. So I did it for part of the summer and I was never so happy in my entire life. And I, you know, we did ballet, you know, five, six days a week. We did uh, jazz classes. We did this. I mean, it was, you know, you put on a leotard in the morning and you didn't take it off until the end of the day. Um, if we, if we did, went into town, we had our, our leotards on and we had our shorts over it. Um, at, at night we would go to T Jacob's pillow or tangle it. It was all about the arts. And when I came home from that, what I was used to do was take two classes a week. And that was great. And I was, that, it just didn't work anymore. I said, I, I, I craved more. I was like, mom, how do we do this? Where else can I go? I need to learn this. I want to learn that. Um, it just, that was the game changer. And it was the game changer because it also had my people. I made right. friends who we got each other. We understood each other. You know, that was the time that you either called each other on the phone or you wrote letters to each other. And we, we got it. Everybody was a little different. Nobody wanted to be alike there. We admired our differences. And, and somebody was, was a, a dancer and a flutist. And somebody was this. And it was just, I was accepted as for who I was. And I found my people. And all I wanted to do, I was like, oh, my God, this is where I fit. Right. So along with meeting all of those people, I assume you had some teachers and some instructors that were a big part of your journey and why you wanted to stick with dance? Um, t teachers, you know, I'll, I've always said mentorship is huge in everything we do. And our teachers, when they're young, whether it be our coaches, our teachers, um, their art teachers, their sports coaches, those people who make those, those first impressions are massive. I was so damn lucky. <laughs> I was so <laughs> damn lucky. Um, I, had, uh, I danced at one studio that uh, an, uh, what I, I would put in my world was an older woman. She, I probably met her and she was in her 40s or 50s, okay? Um, by the time I finished there, when I was in my teens, her kids were teaching in their 20s. So she couldn't be that old, especially mm -hmm. at that point in time when people had children in, at 18 to 20. Um, but I always saw her as the older teacher. Um, she, she was strict, but so damn loving. And that was truly along the lines of who, like when I went to dance camp, I had a French teach, a French ballet teacher. I had a Russian ballet teacher and they were strict, but they cared. Um, in college, uh, th this is wild actually. If when um, from the bar to the boardroom came out this February mm -hmm. um, and we did a big Amazon launch and we were all over social media that day, Tara. And um, one of my dance teachers from college, somebody, Alvin, who I loved as a teacher and I admired him and he was such a great man and so inspiring for everyone. Um, he reached out to me and like sent me a Facebook message and we were corresponding. He's like, I'm so thrilled to see everything you're doing. And I'm like thinking about the book and his impact of who I am today, it was him and there was, and there was Mrs. Sturkin and there was such leaders in my life. You right. know, not te just teach, you know, they were, they were strict, yet they cared and they, wa they were doing, they truly, truly adored us. Right. So in moving into now you've graduated high school, you're going to college. What was the decision? Was it always, I'm going to major in dance or was there a thought of, I want to major in something else? How did it, how did you come to that decision that this might be your career? Um, so it was, I didn't see anything else for myself. My parents on the other hand <laughs> were those fabulous loving parents that said, you can get a degree in dance if you get a degree in something that pays a bill. Mm -hmm. So um, both my parents were from, you know, had a very, very strong business background. 
um, business owners, entrepreneurs, successful people in their own right um, in various different ways. And they're like, absolutely, we will endorse you getting a degree in dance as long as you get a degree in something that pays the bill. And it was a struggle, especially at this time in, you know, looking in the late 70s, I started college in 1980, to find a program that wasn't a, either a conservatory or like a true dance program that you could actually get a degree in something that pays the bills versus, you know, you could take dance as a hobby or a, you know, a secondary, a minor, but you can't right. take it as a major and you get a degree in something, you know, so my other degree is in communication. So I never knew what the hell I was going to do with dance, but I knew I couldn't stop. Right. So in looking back and obviously you graduate college, you get into the printing business of, of all things. Are you still dancing at this time? When I graduated um, before, I, I, so interestingly enough, when I graduated, I, was, I had a, a couple of jobs before the printing world. Okay. And um, when I was 23, I, you know, I got a job in, you know, I got my first job out of college. That didn't work out so well. I was fired. And that led to my second job. You have to be fired once. It's just, yeah. you know, it's a way to build you. Mm -hmm. Simple as that. Um, so I was lucky I got it done early um, and I was able to grow past that. In my second job, you know, there were so many things I also, once I truly committed to dance that I didn't do growing up. So like dancers didn't go on the high school ski trip. Right. It, was, it was a really bad idea. You know, we didn't do that. You know, we, we didn't do things that you could really get hurt in other than mm -hmm. hurting yourself through dance, that's okay. Um, so um, I had skied a couple of times and I loved it, I loved it, but it wasn't something I ever really could do regularly. So I had gotten married and my girlfriends, my husband, a, a, a few of us went on this ski trip out west and um, I was fine until I came around a tree and a little young man came out of nowhere behind the tree and took me out and took my knee out. Mm. And at 23, I had knee surgery and the surgeon told me, you will never dance again at that point. And that was taking my, you know, as much of the, I, I was, you know, I was dancing a little bit, you know, nights, weekends, classes, you know, just doing my thing. But to s learn that quote unquote, you'll never do it again was truly pulling, you know, my lifeline away. Right. And at that time, did you panic and think, oh, thank goodness that I have a degree in something else? Or were you thinking, no, I'm going to find a way I'm going to dance? Um, I truly was crying hysterically and consolably. Um, my, you know, we were young. I was married. My husband had no idea what to do with me. Um, and it took me a long time to come to terms with it. It took me a long time to say, you know what? Dance was one form of creativity. That doesn't mean you, all your creative outlets are taken away. Right. And that took me years and years and years to come to the other side of. And, and probably until Slater's success was truly birthed, did I see the, the, the meshing of my creative soul and my business soul. And that's exactly what this series is about. And this is a great transition into, into this part of the interview. So you've spent your life dancing. You have all these lessons that you've learned. What are some of the main ones that you were able to then use in your business career? Um, there, there was so many. And you know what? It was funny because at the time I didn't realize it. Right. You know, um, when people, you know, would, you would go for the job and they would say, and I remember this in, when I was starting to work for, before printing, I worked for a corporate event catering company. Okay. And they're like, okay, so, you know, we're in the office from about, you know, nine to five-ish, depending upon the party schedule. And then the parties are, you know, nights, weekends, this and that. And I was just like, okay, great. 
Mm-hmm. And it was, it wasn't like, you know, like it, there was no, oh, well, if I'm working a night, do I get a day off? It wasn't like if I'm working a weekend, what comp time do I have? It was just like, okay, sure. Because in dance, you, you know, it, in college for me, I went to class all day. You had rehearsals at night. You had, might've had a rehearsal on Saturday. You then had work to do for, for the, you know, for school because I was running, I did do two degrees in, in four years. Right. So it was just what I knew, you know, it was, and I think I, the same way I transitioned into the printing world and, and starting a family that way. Right. So commitment was always something very dear to you. You were used to, you know, deadlines and being here and doing this, that was just normal for you. So it was easy to, to work hard in, in now another way. Yeah. You just, you learned this is, this is what needs to get the job done, right? This is what you need to do to get the show up. Mm -hmm. Great. This is how we show up and do it. And you mentioned earlier about the teachers being mentors to you. And obviously a big part of your business today has to do with relationships and mentoring. So is that something that you feel stemmed from the dance world for you? Yeah. You know what? Absolutely. Um, when I think back and I, the, so here's a crazy story and something probably I didn't plan on sharing in this podcast. <laughs> um, Tara, you know me so well to prom sometimes. Yeah. So I mentioned this dance teacher I had growing up and then how her children started teaching when they were in their 20s, etc. So I did have one paid job as a dancer. I worked in summer stock and I was 18 years old and I auditioned for it and I ended up getting the position. And somehow or another, I don't know how they put an 18-year-old as dance captain of a leader of 20, 22, 24, and 25-year-olds, okay, wow. who were in the business world of dance in New York City. And I was like, I don't know why or how, but they did. I made $50 a week. And how did I get the opportunity to audition? One of my teacher's kids, her son, knew the director said, you know, uh, and I, you know, was coming back from my first freshman year in college and I reached out to my dance teacher. I was like, hey, what classes you got going this summer? You know, got to keep in shape. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to be working during the day to make money, but you know, you know, I, 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 what can I teach? What can I do? Right. You know, how, what, what do you got going? And that was my reach out and there was no emails. It was a phone call or a letter. Mm Mm-hmm. And the next thing I know is I get, you know, I hear from her son saying, okay, I have, I have an opportunity for you this summer. I know of an opportunity. So it comes back to the relationships. Right. And it always has. And it's so easy to forget that. Right. And I think another thing you said before was how your you know, creative soul and your business soul kind of came together. Do you feel that because you did have a creative background that that led you to be more creative in your business life because you were able to be free and open during dance and not everyone gets that experience? You know, um, more than anything, I'd say in the work I do today, I get to look at businesses completely objectively and look it through a lens of what is a, what, whether you're looking at leaders, at teams, at businesses, what can be created here? Where's the opportunity? You know, um, and I could say like in, in choreography, you're like, you need the foundation steps to have those really big leaps. In business, in leadership, we need those foundation steps to take the really big leaps. And it, it's just, for me, it has, become, it has become so apparent, parallel, and clear without, so like dance, I didn't have to think. I needed to train my body. Mm-hmm. You know, so you get to a point, if you're looking to master a double pirouette or triple pirouette or anything else that you're looking to master, you know, you know the foundation, you know your positioning, and then you just keep practicing it and practicing it and practicing it. 
The same thing is with leadership. The same thing is with business. The same thing is with sales and marketing and the way we communicate. It's the practice and the execution. If you want a great execution, you need to have the, the miles of practice under that and the dedication to it. Right. And you mentioned your book, which is your latest book from the bar to the boardroom. And this book had a whole dance theme to it. Did you ever think that this would be something you would do? And is it kind of seem full circle now that this book has, you know, so much of your past involved in it? Um, this book was the scariest thing I have done in ages. Okay, a clearly a roller coaster blindfolded would be a much easier experience. <laughs> um, you know, I was, I was doing a couple of years, about a year and a half ago, I was doing an enormous amount of inner work. This was after my youngest had graduated from college. And I was like, you know, I'm always about the purpose and the why and this and that. And I came to this place of who am I and where do I go next? And why am I going there? You know, two kids through college, not, you know, thankfully jobs, you know, careers, they also had their own apartments, you know. So who am I and what do I do next? And for the, I slowed down for the first time in a long time. And that's what led to the speeding up. So in that slowing down, in that introspection, I started looking at the impact of my work and the impact of the things we do and why I do it and what's important. And I said, oh my God, this is the biggest creative outlet for me. It is so fulfilling. And in that, I started seeing, I started slowing down. I started taking some tap classes again against the, the doctor. What the doctor doesn't need to know, the doctor doesn't need to know. <laughs> so I started dancing at very simple level. So I, I know I can't go to a, you know, advanced class. I know I have to stay within certain boundaries not to hurt myself. And in doing that, I just let myself go. And I started seeing so clearly the parallels of growing a business and growing a dance, you know, the foundation steps, you know, we do a plie every day. If it's in ballet, you do a plie with your legs out. If you're a modern, you do a, uh, you know, what basically is a plie with your legs in parallel. If you're, you know, in a tap class, you're doing a warm up this way. It's all the same. And business, it doesn't matter if it's a for-profit, a non-profit, uh, a, a law firm, a CPA, uh, um, or whatever company it is. It's, it's all the same, the foundations. And it was just for the very first time blatantly apparent, apparent to me. And I was like, what if? I actually talked about it. Right. So writing the book brought you back to kind of your first love, which was dance. And so you said you are still taking some classes. I was going to ask you to kind of to wrap this up. What, what does your dance life look like now? Um, well, my dance life is a little bit aligned in my exercise life. Okay. So, um, not only did I blow out my knee, I blew my back out when I was 18 at the end of summer stock. So, um, I am dedicated to keeping my body strong and healthy. So I know my body needs to work. So I will incorporate Pilates. I will do some yoga. I'm doing boxing. It is, nice. the, it, it's insane, but it's technique. Mm -hmm. You know, it's technique. You give me something with a technique and I thrive. Right. You know, I'll, I'll, I, I love my tap classes because I did tap as a young kid and it was just fun. And, you know, it makes some great noise. Mm -hmm. um, and I know I won't leap in tap. Right. So no. still dancing, maybe just playing it a little safer <laughs> now. Well, Ivy, thank you for sharing your story, sharing how dance has really affected you as the leader that you are today. And I would like to tell our listeners they can subscribe to her success story, leave a review, tell us what you think, and stay tuned for this month because we have a lot of guests with various different backgrounds. It's going to be a really interesting series to see how how their arts and sports backgrounds have impacted their leadership journey. Thanks for being here, everyone.